So, nanti, like, you tengok page um, chapter 3, transportation, page 53. Okay, page 53. Okay, set? Boleh? Teacher set sekarang? Boleh, boleh. Ha. Okay, so last time teacher dia tunjukkan korang kan how the blood is pumped from right to left, correct? So right is oxygenated blood, correct? Okay, and then um, for left is, oh sorry, left is, left is oxygenated blood, right is deoxygenated blood. Okay. Yes, this is the blood. Okay, so now, um, okay, so now turn to page 55. Turn to, so turn to page 55. You see that? Okay, this one is about diastole and si uh, systole, right? Diastole and systole. Okay, so um, last time teacher to look at you. Wait, huh? Just share this one. Okay, so you can see, ya ni, teacher tunjukkan. Boleh nampak teacher share ni, this one. Last time teacher tunjuk this one kan? How the pump, how the blood is pumped through our uh, our heart. This one. Okay, now teacher can um, kita kena study tentang ni. Cepat, eh? Okay, so kita recall balik. Okay, can? Okay, so this one. Okay, blood is from, from uh, blood, oxygenated blood from our lungs. You see? Can you see on the screen? Can? Tak boleh. You nampak muka cikgu je. Okay, jap. Ah, dia ada album, banyak album. Banyak album? Okay, okay. Wait, ah. Folder, 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 folder. Okay, jap. Teacher ni dulu. You can just call. Stop share, wait, ah. Okay, this one. Yeah, this one. Okay. Nampak? <laughs> Nampak? On the screen? Okay. Okay, teacher okay, continue. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. So, you remember last time teacher say our uh, oxygenated blood is pumped from our lungs through pulmonary vein through pulmonary vein. And then, okay. this one, dia berlaku simultaneously, secara serentak, correct? To our atrium blood from your body, which is the oxygenated blood, kan? Then, here, your atrium is contract. And then, your near vertical will, will be relaxed. Remember? Okay? Okay. Kalau you tak dengar, you cakap tau. Teacher akan dengar. Okay? Okay, and then, this time, um, this one pula. Okay, so then this one, when the blood from the atrium is pumped through the ventricles, so this one, we create diastole movement. Diastole movement, see page 55. So there, our, uh, the tricuspid and also bicuspid valve will be open. So during that time, the sound will be produced, which is dupe sound. The first sound, dupe sound. Okay, so dupe sound. So this one, dia, dia dah bagi to you, this one, this sound is diastole, untuk diastole punya. So, usually untuk diastole, dia punya pressure is 80 ke 120 dalam buku. Is it 80 or 120? Um, for uh, diastole, it is 100. 100 what? Yes, 120. 75. 75. Okay. So, this one, oh yeah. 
you punya 75 ah tapi yang usually kan dia 120 over 80 tapi this one untuk dalam buku you, you so you kena follow ni lah 120 is for uh, sister leg so now yang ni first first movement tu kan yang teacher tunjuk, tunjuk dekat screen ni so first movement yang bunyi dup tu okay from out, from the atrium this one is 120 dia punya pressure Eh, sorry, 75, 75, sorry, 75, okay? And then, sekejap lah, this one, okay, during this time, okay, so the tricuspid, uh, sorry, tricuspid and also bicuspid valve akan close. So, during that time, dia punya uh, crescent valve akan open, okay, dia akan open. So, during this time, dia akan bunyi loop, okay? So, this one is systole, systole movement, okay? Boleh. Okay. Ah. So the reading kalau you baca untuk blood pressure is 120 over 75. Millimeter. Hg what? Apa kita cakap Hg? Pronunciation Hg is mercury. Okay. Mercury. Boleh? Okay. And then um, kat sini. Okay. So pulse rate. So pulse rate biasanya kita akan tunjuk, kita akan detect kita punya heartbeat. Berapa kita punya um, kita punya beating heart. Okay. So biasanya, uh, usually kan, uh, dia dah bagi you um, mana? Oh dia tak ada kat sini dalam buku nota. Tapi biasanya dia akan bagi you dia punya jadual. jadual. Adakah dia normal? So kalau normal berapa? Dia punya pressure. Okay. So biasanya kan yang normal 80. 80. Okay. Boleh? Dengar cikgu? Okay. So 80 ya. So kalau above 80 beating heart, so means you um, antara you berlari ataupun you takut, nervous, macam tu. Alright. Boleh. Kalau below 80 means maybe you sleep, you berehat, you tak buat apa-apa, you just reading books, macam tu. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay next. Um, okay this one is about human blood. Page 58. Okay human blood ni. This one. Ah, okay, uh, teacher share lagi satu. Oh tak ada. Uh, teacher buka YouTube sekejap. Sikit lah. Susah kan pakai ni? Okey ke? Korang boleh? Boleh dengar cikgu cakap? Yeah. <laughs> Susah sikit kan? So takpelah eh. Kita buat kelas. So that korang tak rugi. Wait ah. Open um, YouTube first. Open uh, Human Blood Group. Okay, so teacher, um, you tengok notan you, page 58. So now, dia kata sini, okay, kita punya blood, okay, walaupun ada merah, tapi komponen dalam tu as many, such as blood plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells and also another one is black blood. Okay. So usually kita punya warna red blood, uh, darah sedara, warna dia warna merah, correct? Okay. So warna merah because of hemoglobin. The hemoglobin colouring of kita punya darah warna merah. Okay. Then, uh, you see there, blood plasma. Blood plasma ni apa? Okay. This one yang all the nutrients from what you eating or uh, uh, such as apa tu benda-benda uh, yang nak buang. Contoh urea or carbon dioxide. So that one is plasma, blood plasma. Okay. So blood plasma ni function dia to transport dissolved substance and heat to the whole body. Okay. So biasanya kan kalau you tengok kalau ada orang derma darah, ada orang derma darah, 
So nanti dia akan pergi satu blood bank. So, so dekat situ uh, uh, makmal, uh, pembantu makmal dia akan dia akan separate the blood cells into four groups tadi which is blood plasma, white blood plasma, platelets and also red blood cells because each individu they need different types of um, blood plasma ataupun dia perlukan red blood cells macam tu. Okay contoh biasanya kalau ada orang aksiden okay aksiden dia akan uh, orang tu akan ditransferkan dia akan ambil blood plasma saja because that person dia punya blood dah habis keluar dah keluar banyak. So because of that blood plasma kena trans uh, kena masuk dalam badan dia kena transfer ke dalam badan dia because dia nak uh, banyakkan lagi darah dia because dia, sini dia kata nutrien kan and then hormon lagi okay uh, ataupun contoh orang tu kurang darah okay kurang darah so dia akan transfer red blood cells tu dia okay so red blood cells apa dia punya function is to transport oxygen saja okay to transport oxygen in hemoglobin tadi dia cakap dah bagi tahu hemoglobin is what hemoglobin is particles dalam blood Uh, dalam uh, red blood cells tu. So. Sorry, dalam blood tu. Okay, dalam blood. So, dia yang buatkan blood tu warna merah. Okay, boleh? Okay, and then kita tengok situ white blood cells pula. So, white blood cells ni, okay, this one is kita punya imun, imun badan. Kalau you ada apa-apa masalah, white blood cells tu akan, bukan mas, uh, maksud, maksud cikgu contoh lah, you sakit perut. So, first, uh, white blood cells akan pergi be, uh, tempat bakteria tu untuk engulf, akan makan bakteria tu. So, that bakteria tu akan Uh, bakteria tu akan mati lah, okay? So white blood cells. So functionally sih, dia kata situ fights against infections by destroying microorganisms, okay? Dekat nota, okay? Dekat nota, okay? So shape dia, shape dia pun tak sama dengan uh, red blood cells. Red blood cells warna merah, tapi white blood cells ni dia ada warna putih. Tengah-tengah dia akan ada um, ni. Cepat, cepat, cepat. Kali uh, red blood cells, white blood cells. White blood cells. Hmm. Okay, so dalam buku awak nanti dia akan tunjukkan macam ni white blood cells ya, example This one, okay, this is type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 type of white blood cells which is monocyte, eosinophil, basophil, neutrophil and also lymphocytes So all this is for our um, fight against infections, immune, immune badan punya, okay, boleh? So biasanya warna dia warna putih, dalam dia ni ayo akan tengok tompok-tompok macam ni warna hitam. So nanti dalam buku kan dia akan bentuk ada bentuk C yang warna hitam tu ataupun uh, bulat warna hitam macam ni dalam dia lah. Dia tak akan warnakan. Cuma dia akan warnakan dalam ni warna hitam saja. Contoh macam monocytes kan, si dia punya bentuk macam ni eosinophil is macam mana. Tapi biasanya korang punya dia tak akan tanya pasal what blood cells lah. Dia akan bagi tahu what blood cells apa function dia. Dia hanya tanya macam tu saja. Okay? Okay. Boleh? Faham? Faham ah? Okay, and then lastly is platelets. Okay, platelets ni apa? Platelets ni dia, kategori dia sama macam white blood cells tapi different lah. Apa fungsi dia? For helps in clotting blood to stop bleeding. So contoh lah you ada bleeding. Okay, bleeding uh, tak stop. So platelets ni akan keraskan. Biasa yang you, apa tu macam you akan, bila dia kering darah tu, you akan copek dia kan? Macam kan? Uh, so that one is platelets. Ah, uh, platelets tujuan dia untuk bekukan darah tu so that the darah dalam takkan keluar lagi, takkan flow lagi. Boleh? Okay next kita tengok sini human blood groups. Okay so for human blood groups, we have four types which is A, B, AB and also O. Okay so you tahu tak sel darah you want, uh, group apa? Tahu? Zungwe, Kit Yu dengan Sahij? Tahu? Okay macam teacher, yeah. teacher blood O positif. So means teacher adalah recipient or, or donor. Teacher adalah You tahu apa maksud tu? Donor mean teacher donor, uh, blood O boleh donor untuk semua orang. Because, okay, you see ah, nampak tak dekat screen cikgu? Eh, dekat screen. Nampak? Boleh? Nampak ah? Okay, this one blood O. You see blood O here, okay, dia tak ada apa-apa attach ni. Okay, teacher boleh tahu antigen, see antigen. A have A antigen, B have B antigen, and also blood for A, B have A and B antigen. So, what is antigen? Antigen ni macam kad pengenalan. Identification of the blood. Okay. So macam O you see antigen dia tak ada. So that's why O can donor to all all uh, group of uh, blood. A, B, A, B. But here you see for blood A, B dia tak boleh dia tak boleh, uh, sorry dia boleh receive semua tapi dia tak boleh donor untuk semua because they have antigen. Okay, antigen. Okay, what is important for antigen ni? For dia punya recognition. Macam ID lah. ID. So 
uh, contoh blood O bila teacher transfuse dekat uh, blood B so dia boleh masuk kat situ tapi bila A B dia akan uh, dia nak derma pada B dia tak boleh because dia ada sini A antigen A so because of antigen A dia akan automatically against dengan blood B okay so another one apa yang lagi ada dekat sini adalah antibody you see dekat nota you antibody there okay so antibody macam ni Okay, blood O, you see there's no antigen here. But because of there's no antigen, they have antibody. So antibody A and antibody B. Okay, so bila dia ada antibody, blood O cannot receive receive from another blood. Dia, dia boleh terima O saja because of the antibody. Antibody ni apa pula? Okay, antibody ni macam security guard. Security. So contohlah blood B, dia, dah, uh, dia uh, masuk pergi blood O. Because of the antibody there, Okay, blood O ada antibody A, correct? You tengok situ dekat dalam nota, page uh, 59. Okay, dekat blood O, they have their antibody A. Okay. So, antibody, anti. See, nampak dah, nampak dia anti. So, anti means dia tak suka. Dia tak suka. So, bila darah B masuk pergi, transfer pergi O, dia tak boleh because dia ada anti B there. So, because of that, O akan reject that blood. Okay, but if O donor to O part, all the type of group boleh because O tiada antigen. Dia boleh masuk macam tu saja. Okay. Boleh. Boleh faham? Ada tak? Faham tak maksud cikgu? Okay. So macam ni je. You ingat. Apa tu antigen? Antigen is for ID. ID penting untuk bagi tahu dia apa types of blood dia. O ke A ke O A B. Macam tu. Okay. What is antibody? Antibody is for dia um, darah tu tak boleh bercampur dengan darah lain. Because of the NT1. Okay, so A have two. NT A and NT B. But A B, there's no NT body. So that's why dia boleh dapat sembuh darah. Okay, boleh. Boleh ya? Okay ya? Ada soalan betul cikgu? Okay, so what happen? What happen lah? Contoh lah, teacher darah O positif, right? Okay. Contoh, uh, doktor tu salah masuk. Teacher punya blood O. Tapi dia pergi masuk darah cikgu B. Supposed to be, teacher O, I have to receive O blood. Correct. I, teacher tak boleh ambil blood B. Because uh, I have NTB there. Correct. So what happened to the patient? Apa jadi pada cikgu? Teacher akan kehilangan banyak darah because white blood cells akan attack. Because dia, kan teacher kata tadi, uh, white blood cells tu tujuan dia untuk apa? Dia fight infection. So then, kalau blood B masuk blood cikgu, kan cikgu blood dah O, darah O tak boleh receive semua because dia NTB there. Because of that, that patient akan lose more blood. So orang tu akan jadi bahaya lah. Lagi bahaya. Okay, boleh faham? Tapi contoh, that patient, dia sama blood. Because of sama blood, contoh teacher O, so uh, apa donor cikgu pun O juga. So there's, there's no antigen there. Because of the antigen, so NT, NTB or NTA tak akan attack. So okay lah macam tu. Okay. So apa beza pula yang positif dengan negatif tu pula? That one we call as reserves. Sini ada you punya? Tak ada. Okay tak apa. Ini hanya pengetahuan lah. So reserves nama uh, negatif dengan positif tu nama dia reserves. R-H-E-S-U-S. Reserves. Apa tu reserves? This one pay, uh, important lah because dia kena bagi tahu. Contoh teacher O positif. So teacher kena dapat O positif saja. Kalau teacher O negatif, teacher kena dapat O negatif saja. Tapi kalau contohlah A, B, A, B, dia positif ke negatif, dia tak ada masalah. Ha, because dia boleh dapat semualah. Because of all positif. Okay, itu reserves lah. Okay, ada soalan tak? Ada? Tak ada. Okay, so kita tengok sini ya. Bawah sekali dekat muka surat 59. Okay, this one you kena faham tadi macam Tisha cakap lah. You kena tengok mana satu antigen, uh, mana satu apa ni, uh, antibody so that you tahu mana satu donor, mana satu recipient. Recipient tu yang terima lah, berterima semua. So you see that, untuk recipient, A, B saja boleh terima semua. Correct? Nampak tak? Dia tanda kat situ, tanda right. A, and A, B. So means A, B can receive all uh, type of group, blood uh, blood group. Tapi, for O, only O saja for recipient. Okay, but donor, okay, for donor, O can donor all type of group tapi AB hanya terima AB saja. Okey? Boleh? Faham? Okey ah. Okey. Next kita tengok muka surat 60. Okey, 60 trans, transport system in plants. 
So hari tu teacher dah explain kan apa tu respiration, what is respiration also transpiration, correct? So now untuk plants, there's uh, they have respiration tapi during the day but during the night, sorry, respiration is for humans only. Transpiration saja untuk uh, plants, okay? So transpiration, see there, dia kata situ loss of water. Water what? Water vapor. Okay, so human, kita tak uh, keluarkan water vapor. Correct? Because kita bukan buat uh, photosynthesis. So transpiration untuk keluarkan water vapor. But what about, what about gutation? Gutation is, sorry, gutation, gutation. Gutation is um, component yang ada dalam tu. Which is, surat. Okay. Gutation. Okay, so gutation page 61, number 6. See that? Gutation is a loss of water from plants in the form of liquid known as xylem sap. Set through hydrothoats, which are always open and on the edge of leaves. Okay, contoh lah, in, dekat, uh, pada waktu pagi lah, early morning. We see ada satu air, ada air-air dekat leaf tu kan? Berat perasan tak? Ha. That one is gutation. Itu bukan... Uh, trans, uh, bukan transpiration, is gutation. So gutation is what? Gutation is dia punya xylem dalam dalam uh, daun tu, dia keluarkan air because terlampau sejuk sangat. So dia akan keluarkan air, terlampau lembab sangat dalam dalam pokok tu. So dia akan keluarkan air tu. So that pokok tu tak terlampau banyak air. Okay, itu gutation. What, but what about uh, transpiration? Transpiration pula, this one, bila saja pokok tu buat photosynthesis, Okay, dia akan tukarkan carbon dioxide to oxygen, so dia akan automatically akan keluarkan uh, water, uh, water vapor through transportation. That itu beza untuk transportation and gutation. Ada soalan tak? This one. Ada? Tak ada. Okay ah. So hari tu ingat tak teacher tanya you, mana satu, eh ada ke? Oh, ada. Uh, this one you tengok cross section of leaf. Buka bawah tu. Diagram 3.15. Okay, 3.15. So, there. Okay. So, atas sekali tu cuticle. Nombor dua tu adalah upper epidermis. Okay. Epidermis. And then mesophyll palisade cell. So, mesophyll palisade cell and also apa yang ada, uh, apa tu? Ada chloroplast? Ya, ada chloroplast. Ada dua cell dalam plant. Which is, one is mesophyll palisade cell. Another one is, ada yang teacher cakap. Another one is the Siapa tahu? Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll, ah, chlorophyll. Yang ada chlorophyll dengan chloroplast. Satu mesophyll palisade cell. Another one? Another one what? The? Stoma. Stoma cell. Can you see that? Sir? Ada nampak? Di mana? Sahaja, okay. Ada? You nampak? Ke situ? Stoma and also mesophyll palisade cell. Both of this uh, organ, organ, organelle have chloroplast. Okay, so tadi kan teacher kata during the gutation tu, so dia akan keluarkan daripada xylem. Which is xylem? Nampak tak xylem? Yang dekat round tu. Okay, so yang atas sekali. So xylem is for transport of water. So because of that, the xylem detect sampai banyak air. So dia akan keluarkan. Air tu. Okay, through gutation process. During the, during the day. Okay, during the day. Because the humidity is too, too what? Too? Too high. Sejuk sangat. Okay? Boleh? Okay, so experiment dia, kalau you tengok situ, rate of, transpi uh, rate of transpi uh, transpiration, factors, what the factors is? One number of stoma. So, if number of stoma terlampau banyak, okay, terlampau banyak, so, uh, pelan tu akan tutup. Contohlah, um, macam mana? Okay, contoh pelan tu terlampau banyak uh, serap air. Okay, dia ambil terlampau banyak air. So, stoma dia terlampau banyak dekat situ, dia akan buka. Kenapa dia buka? Dia kena keluarkan air tu. Tapi contohlah, during hot day, during hot day, okay, number of stoma dia sangat banyak, so because of number stoma dia terlampau banyak, dia akan tutup semua. Because, prevent water, water loss, which is the water vapor. Okay. Boleh ah? And then another one, light intensity. Okay, light intensity senang. During the day, photosynthesis akan banyak. But during the night, dia akan 
sikit because there's lack of light intensity. Boleh? Okay ya. Okay, ingat tak hari tu? Uh, what During what time akan ada banyak photosynthesis? Kita buat soalan. Chapter 2 punya. Daytime. Ah, daytime. During what what time? What? 11. Uh, yes, 11. 11, 11 AM. AM. Because masa tu, masa tu matahari sangat panas. Light intensity dia high. Okay, high intensity high. Okay, another one, temperature. Okay, so temperature pun sama juga. You ingat macam ni. Kalau sampai panas temperature dia, so dia akan influence the transp transpiration. Contohlah, um, during the day. Okay, during the day, sangat panas. So, adakah transpiration berlaku? Transpiration, ah. which is water vapor. Happen. Because dia kata tadi, transpiration is what? Dia keluarkan water vapor through photosynthesis. Uh, through photosynthesis. Okay, so, temperature kalau high, akan berlaku uh, transpiration lah. Okay, ataupun humidity of air. Humidity of air is what? Dekat luar. Dekat luar, surrounding of the uh, place. Tempat pokok tu tumbuh. Contoh tempat sejuk. Kalau humidity dia sejuk, so pokok tu akan less buat photosynthesis. Because dia dah sejuk. Tapi kalau panas, dia akan buat lagi banyak photosynthesis. Because of the humidity of the air. Okay. Okay, another one is air movement. Okay, air movement. Air movement ni, okay, tengok muka surat um, 62. 62 dah eh. Okay, 62. So now di, yang kat sini, okay, this one is about the experiment lah. Yang tadi yang kita cakap tu. Okay, so you tengok ah. Hmm, for light intensity dah. Okay, light intensity. So experiment tu dia letakkan pokok satu dekat um, luar, satu lagi kat dalam box. Okay, so now dekat mana satu yang ada light intensity? Dekat yang atas ke yang bawah? Dalam box ke atau luar box? Of course lah di luar box tu kan? Okay, light intensity dia lagi banyak, light source dia. Tapi yang dalam tu kurang. So, you see there, electronic balance dia, boleh nampak nombor dia? Boleh nampak? Okay, dekat situ kan? De dekat yang uh, plan yang bukan ni. Plan yang this one. Yang ni. Okay, yang ni berapa dia punya uh, electronic balance dia? Berapa dia punya weight of the plant? 220. 220. Okay, so this one, yang bawah tu, yang dalam box. It is? 22.5. Yes, 22.5. Okay, 22.5. Okay, so now, dia nak bagi tahu you, because of light intensity here, okay, because of light intensity here, Okay, so conclusion dia here dia cakap apa? Increase in light intensity increases rate of transpiration. So, lagi banyak light in light source, so lagi banyak dia punya rate of transpiration. Boleh? Sebab air dia kurang. Nampak tak dekat situ? Air yang dekat light tu kurang. 220 saja dia punya gram. Tapi, untuk um, tu, untuk yang dalam box tu, 2, 2, 2 point. 5 gram. So means air dia lagi banyak. Okay, air dia lagi banyak. Okay. Okay, hi Sarina. You boleh dengar cikgu? Boleh? Sarina? You boleh dengar cikgu? Tak boleh dengar. Boleh? Okay. Ah. So kita orang kat page 62 ah. Okay. So now air humidity pula. Okay, you tengok air humidity. So for air humidity means dia punya surrounding. Okay, you see there? Satu pokok, weight dia 220. Okay, another one yang dia, dia wrap with plastic bags, it is 218.18 grams. Okay, there. Okay, this show that if the increase of air humidity, so lower rate of transpiration. Kenapa? Because air humidity dia. Okay, kita tengok ah. Increase air humidity. So, dekat yang uh, ni, this one yang kat atas ni. Okay, that one. Okay, because dia punya uh, leaf tidak dibalut dengan plastic bag. Kenapa dia kena balut dengan plastic bag dekat leaf dia? Because the leaf that uh, apa, buat photosynthesis. Okay, hanya leaf saja. Yeah, hanya leaf saja yang buat photosynthesis. So, because of that, dia wrap hanya uh, hanya daun tu saja lah. Okay. So then, kita tengok, dia lagi uh, banyak dia punya air. Because here, increase air humidity. Sini air humidity dia increase ke lower? 
atas tu. Dia adalah lower ke high? Hmm. High. High, betul. High. So, here yang bawah ni dia punya adalah low. So, because of that, yang ni increase of A, humidity akan lowerkan dia punya rate of transpiration. Okay? Boleh? Okay, another one you see air movement. Okay, for air movement pula, air movement satu dekat bawah ni ada kipas, satu lagi tak ada. Dia prevent air ada dekat situ. So, that's why dia akan letak dalam box. Okay, dia letak dalam box. So now you see that increase in air movement increases rate of transpiration. Dia akan lagi banyakkan transpiration. Boleh? Faham? Sebab air movement. Okay, contoh macam windy, tempat yang ada banyak angin kan? So dia punya pokok akan buat banyak transpiration process. Okay? Okay, another one temperature. So temperature lagi tinggi temperature, lagi tinggi rate of transpiration. Sebab apa? Sebab banyak uh, by, uh, suhu tinggi. So, bila suhu tinggi, fotosintesis akan selalu berlaku. So, bila selalu berlaku, dia akan keluarkan water vapor which is transpiration process lah. Boleh? Ya. Yeah. Ada apa-apa soalan tak yang tu ni? Ada yang tu tak faham tak masa teacher explain for 62, page 62? Ada? Tak ada? Okay. Wait, uh. Okay, next. You take, tengok situ muka serap 63. Page 63. Okay, untuk 63 ni, teacher bagi tahu you, this one, hmm, transport system. Kalau ditanya you, apa tu transport system, you kena bagi tu, tahu dua saja. Organel dalam pokok, iaitu xylem and also phloem. So, xylem, what's the function of xylem? Xylem is to, to what? Apa dia? Xylem. Dekat situ dah ada. Xylem is for transport. Transport substance. Yes. Water and mineral salts. Mineral salts. Mineral salts. Dia mineral salts tu dalam soil. Dalam tanah tu. Dia akan ambil juga mineral soil tu. Okay. Mineral salts tu because dia perlukan dalam photosynthesis juga. Sikit. Dalam quantity yang sikit. Okay. So xylem you remember. Dia for transport water and also mineral salts. But for what? Uh, for phloem pula? What's the function is for uh, what function of flower? Oh, that's a... Transport products oh, that's of photosynthesis. Off. Such as what? What's the product of photosynthesis? Hmm. Ada tiga. Oxygen. Oxygen lagi? Uh. Huh? Oxygen. Glucose. Glucose. Okay. Another one. Tadi baru tu teacher cakap. Water vapor. Okay, water vapor. Tapi water vapor dia tak transfer lah for phloem. Dia hanya ambil tiga tu saja, Eh, dua ni saja, Oxygen and also uh, glucose. Water Tapi vapor? kan, oxygen. Okay, sekejap. Oxygen. Oxygen dia takkan transport de dekat phloem. Phloem hanya bawa satu tu. Satu, sorry ya, satu saja, Iaitu glucose. Dia akan transport. Kenapa dia bawa uh, glukos? Okay. Bayangkan macam ni. Dekat leaf, photosynthesis happen. Okay. So dekat leaf, happen photosynthesis tu. So dia akan keluarkan glukos. So glukos function dia for what? For the energy. Untuk energy. Energy siapa? Energy untuk organel tu dah dapat energy. For example kan, dekat akar. Akar perlu serap air. Correct? So that glukos, dia akan serap, dia akan ambil glukos from the leaf. So macam mana glukos from the leaf nak pergi ke... Uh, akar, roots, so phloem yang bawa dia. Phloem akan ambil kanji tu, iaitu uh, glukos tadi tu, akan ambil glukos, so dia akan transport tu the roots via phloem. Phloem yang akan bawa. Boleh faham maksud dia? Apa tu phloem? Apa tu xylem? Ada beza lah, xylem dengan phloem. Hmm. Okay, so ada eksperimen, you tengok dekat muka surat 63, you see that um, apa dah benda ni, daun celery, Okay, you nampak daun celery tu? It. Okay, daun celery tu, eksperimen yang paling senang untuk you tengok dia punya pergerakan xylem and phloem dia. Okay, you see um, celery punya uh, daun tu kan? Dia akan potong akar dia. So, you nampak kat bawah dia ni, yang this one. Nampak yang kat sini. This one kan? You nampak tak ada bulat-bulat-bulat tu? So, this one is xylem or phloem. It is the 
xylem actually. Kenapa oh. tau? Okay. Because why xylem? You see here. Okay. This um, celery, dia letak dekat dalam air yang berwarna merah for a few hours. After a few hours, okay, diorang dapat, diorang tengok kat sini eksperimen ni, you see there, the xylem is red color. Why is red color? Because they absorb water. Okay, absorb water. So, this one proof that the plant have transportation process. Transportation process. Okay, boleh faham? Okay, tapi kalau untuk flowworm, okay, you tengok kat bawah ni pula, this one, the bark, the tree bark. Okay, this one is flowworm. Okay, for example lah, you ambil uh, satu pokok, okay, contohlah ni batang dia kan, pokok ni kan, you cut half, okay, you cut half, cut half. So, yang kat bawah tu, you tanggalkan macam ni. This one. You cut half and then you tanggalkan yang ni. Okay. For a few days, you akan nampak dia akan bentuk macam ni. Dia akan bentuk gelembung. Tapi kan, gelembung tu hanya di atas saja. Dekat bawah tak. Because why? Why is it? Sebab? Absorb water. Ah, Because? Tadi teacher kata untuk try, uh, untuk fotosintesis dia akan produce glucose. So glucose is from the leaf. So dekat atas. So bila nanti flowworm dia akan transport transport daripada atas bahan yang dekat atas pergi bawah. Dia akan um, transport yang bahan atas pergi bawah. So that's why sini atas ni hanya dia saja yang bentuk uh, kembung. Dia akan bentuk kembung. Dekat bawah ni tak. Boleh faham? So transportation tu maksud dia that, uh, so sorry. Uh, flowworm hanya transport bahan which, which is the glucose from the leaf to the, the roots. So bila you cut half sini, hanya atas ni saja. Atas ni saja dia akan bentuk gelembung. Okay. Boleh? Ada soalan tak? Boleh faham? Boleh ah? Okay ah? Okay. So last ni you tengok page 64. Okay. This one is similarity and also differences between blood circulatory system and also transport system. So means kita punya uh, transportation dalam badan kita ataupun dalam badan da dalam plants. Okay, so apa similarity dia? Which is both adalah specialized transport system. Okay, or exist in complex organism. Apa tu complex system? Kita lah banyak sangat sel. Okay, macam juga plant. Plant pun banyak sel. Organel dia. Okay, and then both transport substance needed by the cell. Ataupun kita akan excrete. Kita akan buang. Okay. Oh, now the one use vessel to transport substances needed and excre excretory products to the whole body. Okay, to the whole body. Kita punya blood cell so itu tujuan dia. Contohlah, you, apa yang you kencing tu kan? You kencing. Boleh dengar? Okay. Contoh, bila you nak buang uh, air kecil ataupun you nak buang air besar. Okay, so daripada mana dapat bahan-bahan tu? From the blood. Blood tu akan ambil semua bahan-bahan yang tak perlukan. Dia akan regulate dekat you punya kidney. After that, dia akan urinate. Dia akan keluarkan uh, daripada you, you punya urine lah. Okay. So, siapa yang bawa? You punya blood. Okay. Okay. What's the difference between transport and also, uh, sorry, uh, transport system in plant and also for hu uh, animals? Okay. First, untuk animals, you see, made of pump that is hard. Okay. Maksud dia, dia macam mana bergerak. So, hard yang pump. So, bila hard you pump, blood tu akan regulate. Kalau Uh, blood tu tak regulate. Okay, kalau blood tu tak regulate. So, macam mana dia, uh, blood tu akan berjalan? Okay. So, dia kena pump. Blood tu kena pump. Okay. Tapi untuk uh, pokok, sistem uh, plant, transport system of flowering plant does not have pump. Boleh faham pump maksud dia apa? Okay. Contohlah dekat flowering plant, dia tak ada um, dia tak ada macam pump untuk Uh, daripada uh, daripada leaf ataupun daripada plant daripada contoh cikgu bagi ah uh, reflesia reflesia hanya bunga saja kan betul tak so dia dipanggil sebagai flowering plant so dia tak perlukan transport of transport system because dia adalah macam parasite oh contohnya lagi bunga rose okey contoh for example rose bunga rose okey so that flower dia tak perlukan uh, transportation punya system Dekat mana dia dapat tu, dia daripada, daripada leaf dia sajalah. So, leaf tu yang akan buat. Boleh faham maksud dia? Flowering plant, there's no pump there. Dia tak ada uh, pump lah. Okay. And then type of vessels. Type of vessels. For human, kita ada tiga saja nama dia. Which is blood vessels. Nama dia apa blood vessels tu? Artery. Lagi. Capillary and also 
Vince. Yes, Vince. Okay. So, itu tiga ni you kena differentiate lah. Macam mana? Okay. So, for a plant, they have only two which is xylem and also? Xylem and phloem. Yes. Xylem and phloem sahaja. Okay. So, connection between the vessels. Okay. So, connection between the vessels. So, okay. Macam animals, kita punya artery, capillary and vein akan connected to each other. Okay. They akan connected to each other. Tapi, they akan connected with our heart. Okay. So, substance needed by cells. So, dia akan ambil apa yang diperlukan oleh cells. Dia akan keluarkan apa yang tidak diperlukan oleh cells. Excrete from the cells. Okay. For plant. For plant, xylem and phloem are not connected. Betul? Tak connected. Macam tadi, eksperimen untuk yang celery tu. Bila you cut dia punya bawah tu, hanya xylem saja warna merah. Betul tak? Phloem dia tak warna merah. Because different. Xylem for transport water. But phloem transport glucose. Okay, so that's why they're not connected. Okay, boleh paham? Setakat ni, kurang apa dah? 81. Okay, boleh? So, exercise dia, teacher akan bagi dekat sini. Wait now, teacher share. Ya, cikgu ni. Okay, boleh nampak yang ni soalan dia? So this one dekat sini you boleh conteng tau. You nampak tak figure yang dekat atas tu? Tekan atas. Nampak ni? So ni nanti you try jawab. Sementara ada masa lagi berapa minit. You try jawab dekat sini saja. You boleh type. Ataupun kalau tak, you just print ni. Teacher dah bagi view PDF. Yang jawab. Teacher share macam mana? Nanti teacher akan upload dekat FB. Okay? Boleh? Kalau tak pun you boleh jawab sekarang ni juga. Kita jawab sama-sama boleh? Ya? Yeah? Okay. So wait uh. Okay, so this one number one 3.1 Okay, so 3.1 dia Diagram below shows a few types of organisms Okay, so 1A Let's see which one does not, does not need transport system Panda Tak perlukan Panda Panda does not transport transport system. Panda? No. Panda kan animals. Animals perlukan transport system. Blood? Blood vessels eh? Panda yes. Mana satu? Nombor empat. Hmm? Nombor empat. Amoeba. Yes. Because they unicell. Unicell, unicell kan tak perlukan uh, transport system. Correct? Ha, okay. So, okay. Amoeba lagi? Ada lagi? Number number three. Number three and? Yeah. Yes, number one. So number one tu apa nama dia? Number one tu Euglena. Unicell lah, Euglena. They're from protozoa. So number three tu nama dia Paramecium. 
Okay, Faranisim. Tapi nanti handout ni teacher akan upload dekat um, FB. So, nanti you boleh photo set and then you boleh jawab kat rumah. Tapi ini kita jawab dulu untuk bincang. Ha? Okay, so and then number four is Amuba. Okay, Amuba. So, betul. One, three and four. Okay, so now explain your answer. So, macam mana kita nak explain? Because, tadi teacher kata dia okay. unicell kan? Okay, so kalau unicell, macam mana kita nak explain? Only one cell. Only one cell. So because what, yelah, walaupun dia unicell, kenapa macam mana you nak explain dia unicell ke tak? Hmm, macam mana you nak explain? One size. Dia? Kecil. Kecil, okay. Kalau kecil, macam mana nak explain? Tak tahu you jawab macam mana. Dia kecil, satu cell. So, supposed to be, you still nak cakap? Because dia one cell thick. Okay, so dia one cell thick. So dia adalah simple organism does not need any transport system because um, what the cell need dia akan diffuse saja masuk and then akan secret macam tu saja because dia a uh, simple organism okey tu jawapan dia simple organism okey and then uh, for number 2 okey you kena cakap situ je because dia simple organism so dia tak perlukan uh, transport system. Okay. Okay. So number two pula. Okay. Correct statement about the function of transport system. Okay. Apa dia punya function for transport system? A. Transport oxygen from uh, lungs to body cells. Okay. Correct. Yes. That's one the correct statement. Okay. B. Is it B? Correct. Transport urea from kidney to body tissue. No, because that one is for what? Secret only. Dia akan buang. Okay. Na, eh, sorry. Bukan body tissue. Transport urea to kidney. Kidney to, uh, from the body tissue to the kidney. Kan dia akan transport uh, urea. Dia terbalik. Okay, patutnya body tissue. Not from the kidney. Okay. So, C. Transport nutrients to the body cells. Is it correct? Okay, correct. So, D. Transport enzyme, hormone and antibody. Tak pasti. Tak pasti. Correct lah. Kan teacher kata tadi. Enzyme tu apa? Enzyme you punya, contoh you makan. Ataupun you punya hormon. Uh, lagi satu enzyme, okey lah cikgu bagi simple enzyme tu you punya salivary. Salivary gland. Bila you makan, itu enzyme. Dia hancurkan. So that one is also transport system lah. Okay, another one is hormon. Contoh hormon you, hormon uh, you marah ke, ataupun you gembira ke, tu hormon lah. Okay, so hormon pun dia transport during uh, dia punya uh, blood from your blood. Antibody also. Kan teacher kata tadi, kita punya blood ada white blood cells kan? So antibody. So that jawapan dia hanya A, C and also D. A. Okay. okay. So, so number three pula. Okay. Number three. This one. Match the statement about the exchange of substances between the surrounding and body cells to correct organisms. Ah, this one yang tadi simple or complex. So kita and uh, humans, is it simple or complex? We are complex. complex correct. Complex. We are complex. So tadi simple complex. hanya unicellular, unicellular cells. Okay. So uh, a oxygen from atmosphere diffuses directly into the body cells. Complex. Complex ke uh, simple? Oxygen from atmosphere diffuse directly into the body cells. Dia kata situ directly. Directly. Oh. Simple. Because they say directly. Directly. So that one is simple. Dia kata oxygen from atmosphere directly into the body cell. Terus masuk. So that one is simple lah. Kalau kita, oxygen is transported by blood from respiratory organ to the body cells. Body cells. That is, ah, so that one is complex. Kita, sebab, kita punya respiratory organ yang akan transport to you, kita punya cell. Ingat? So B adalah complex. Okay, C. Respiratory waste such as carbon dioxide and urea diffuse out of the cell. Simple complex. or complex? It is? Complex. Simple! Because respiratory waste oh. as carbon dioxide and urea diffuse <laughs> out. Dia terus keluar. Tapi kita kan D. See? You see D? Blood transport excretory waste from body cells to excretory organs. So, kita adalah D. Okay. Boleh? Sebab kita multi-cells. Multi-cells banyak. Okay. 
Boleh? Saya teruskan lagi ya. Okay, number four. Number four, complex the multi-flow map below to show the consequences of a non-functional transport system. Oh, okay, this one dia bagi tahu you. Contohlah, uh, the failure of heart. So, non-functional transport system, dia akan jadi apa? If, okay, contohlah, if kita punya, if the failure of heart. So, heart function dia for pumping blood. Dia akan pump blood. Okay, so sekarang ni, bila blood tu tak boleh pump, so apa akan jadi? Consequences dia. Apa akan jadi pada kita? Blood. Blood cannot. Yes, dia tak boleh, dia cannot, um, dia cannot flow. Ataupun tak, tak boleh transfer to another tempat. Okay, so to answer dia yang pertama. Pump tu. Pump tu? Pump tu, blood. Okay. So another one, uh, blood vessel burst. Okay, contohlah kalau blood vessel burst, apa akan jadi? Satu molekul of the blood, satu uh, satu not molekul, one cell of the blood burst, dia pecah. So, apa akan jadi pada kita? You kena ingat, blood tu for what? Blood. Blood tu untuk transfer oksigen, correct? Kalau dia burst, so oksigen cannot be? Oksigen cannot be transferred. Yes, oksigen cannot be transferred. Okay, so another one adalah Hmm, okay, so tadi kalau blood vessel burst juga, so the nutrient or other substance cannot be transport lah. For example, contoh tadi you makan uh, gula. Okay, tadi tu cakap glukos is for, gula is glukos lah. Glukos, if you makan banyak glukos, so it's for energy for your cells. So bila you punya blood cells pecah, burst, So, tadi uh, glukos tu tak tak boleh sampai ke sel-sel awak. Okay? Boleh? Dia faham? Okay, so teacher stop, stop sini. Boleh? So, nanti teacher akan upload this soalan dekat FB. So, nanti you download, you buat dulu. So, nanti minggu depan kita bincang lagi. Okay? Boleh ya? Sekejap lah. Teacher kena screenshot dulu. Because attendance kan? Okay. Okay. So itu saja lah. You boleh log out. Okay. Thank you. Apa apa nanti soalan minggu depan ah. Okay. Bye. <laughs> okay, Saish, you can lock up now. <laughs> Bye. Hi, Shafika. Boleh dengar cikgu tak? Shafika? Boleh dengar cikgu? Shafika boleh dengar cikgu tak? Eng Hong boleh dengar cikgu? Buka yang kat bawah sekali tu ada audio. Saya jangan semua. Ah, okay, Eng Hong boleh cikgu dengar. Okay, Shafika? Shafika buka yang kat bawah. Bawah. Ada suara. Gufir, awak kena keluar balik. Lepas awak kena tukar nama awak. Huawei tu bukan Huawei. Nanti cikgu nampak Huawei bukan nama awak. Kau dah sorak belum? Syafika 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 boleh dengar cikgu 
Okay, okay, yeah. Boleh. Shafika dekat dengan TV ke? Shafika kena jarak daripada TV. Hey, cikgu yeah, dengar. Yeah, yeah. Nanti kami akan dengar suara TV. Bukan dengar cara cikgu. Yeah. Nanti kalau kita cakap kan serentak. Semua boleh cakap. Ha, Shafika yeah. kena jauh nanti TV sikit. Okay. 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 Okay.